These videos will introduce some of the basics of Matplotlib and how to make various kinds of plots using this library. Some you'll almost ever use, some you might use every day. These videos alone won't make you a master of Matplotlib, and even becoming a master of Matplotlib isn't the same as becoming a master of data visualization. Despite what many online videos and medium articles imply, there's much more to data visualization than learning to use one particular plotting library. Matplotlib is also incredibly deep. The only way to really master it is to make lots of complicated and interesting plots. These videos will show that Matplotlib is easy to use while still being powerful and customizable. We'll be using Matplotlib extensively in this course, so it's important to get to grips with how it works. Here's the simplest Matplotlib example. Follow along with the video. This means pause and type the code in. Yeah, I could give you the code to copy paste, but you have a better chance of remembering it if you type this stuff out at least once. I'm not joking. There's ample scientific literature that says taking notes is very beneficial for learning and retaining what you learned, and this is no different. So back to the example. Like any Python library, we have to import it first. Note that we don't import matplotlib, but rather a sub-package called pyplot. Pyplot is a large library of functions that make matplotlib work like MATLAB, and is a very popular way to use matplotlib, especially when making plots interactively in a notebook or in the interpreter. To save typing, we give it the alias plt, which is very common. Next, we define some data. Of course, in practice, you'll likely be reading this data from a CSV, a database, or some other interesting source. Next, we use the plot method of plt to create the plot. What happens here is the plot method reads the data and translates that into matplotlib line 2D objects. You rarely need to worry about this, and it's very common to just ignore the output of this function. Finally, we call the show function, which actually displays something. The output looks something like this. When I code, I almost always use an IDE, like VS Code, so I write Python code in a text file and run it on the command line. Or if I want to test something quickly, I type code directly into the interpreter. But because I know most people love notebooks, I'll go over how to use matplotlib in a notebook. In a notebook, you can run the magic command matplotlib inline before you start making plots. The effect of this is basically to call show at the end of every cell by default. The weird object that appears is the return value of the plot function that I mentioned earlier. If you don't want to see it, use a semicolon. Another useful magic for notebook users is this. If you want the plots to pop up so that you can interact with them by zooming, panning, scrolling, and so forth, you can specify the matplotlib backend QT instead of inline. Running this will cause the plot to pop up and give you a few options for interaction. On your particular machine, you might have to try a different backend. TK or AG are common ones. Try them if QT doesn't work. Let's get back to plots. Here we specified the y data. If we don't give x values, by default, matplotlib uses the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Specifying x coordinates is simple. We just pass two arguments to the plot function. It's very important to be able to save the figures you make. This is achieved by using the save fig command. Note that it's called before show. This is important. Show will clear the current figure. So if you call it after that, then you'll just save a blank image. Save fig, on the other hand, doesn't clear the figure. So if you want to save multiple times, for example, to save the same figure in different image formats, then that's okay. However, you can only call show once. Just remember, save before showing. Save fig has a few arguments, but there are two important ones. The first argument is the file name. Note the PNG file extension. Matplotlib is clever enough to read your file names and save in the correct format. And you can save in other formats like JPEG, PDF, TIFF, and so on. The next argument is dpi, or dots per inch. This controls the resolution of the figure. Higher numbers give higher resolution images. Generally, the default value is okay, but if you have a lot going on in your figures, you might want to make a high res version. The plot function makes a line graph. With other functions, we can make other kinds of graphs. Probably the most common kind of data visualization, even more common than a line graph, is a scatter plot. To make one, just replace the plot function with the scatter function. To make a bar plot, we simply call the bar function. We can add multiple plots to a figure. Here I've added two, but we can add as many as we like. They'll just get added to the figure until show is called. Note that matplotlib produces different colored lines. As you add more plots, each one will be assigned to a different color, unless you specify otherwise. An interesting feature is that the colors cycle independently on each plot type. So if we add a line plot and a scatter plot, they're both blue. Another way to make multiple plots is just to give them all as arguments to the plot function. I personally find this to be very messy and never use this syntax, but you might want to use it or see other people using it. Internally, matplotlib converts everything to numpy arrays, so of course you can use numpy arrays as inputs to plot, scatter, bar, and other functions. It is often the case that you're working with data that has some labels. Think of a CSV file, or if you know about them already, a pandas data frame. Matplotlib allows you to specify the data container and choose the columns by name as shown here. 
Finally, matplotlib doesn't need the x data to be numeric. This can be especially useful for so-called categorical data, something like the number of a's in each module on a degree. You just have to make sure that you have the same number of names and values, and matplotlib will happily generate your plot. Finally, it's very simple to make a pie chart. Hopefully the code here is fairly self-explanatory. Now we can make a few different kinds of plots appear and then save them, but they do look a little bit shabby. In the next video, we'll talk about how to customize our figures.